Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Well, good morning. That was really good, guys. Really good. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for being with us. Just thank you for always being faithful. Thank you for for just giving us the opportunity to trust you. And Father, as we grow in you to learn to trust you more and not just trust you more, but trust you with all of our heart and with all of our mind and with all of our soul and just open us up, Father, so we can hear your word. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you to speak through me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Cool. Well, it's been fun. It's kind of um, <clears throat> kind of had a fun week or so. Um, I'm actually going to get you guys. If you guys want to follow me, I'll try to help you. <laughs> okay, so it's Mark. Cha- I'm going to be in Mark chapter 4. Then I'm going to go to Hebrews 10. And I'm going to go into Jeremiah 31. So Mark chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 10, and Jeremiah 31, if I can get to, to all those things. But um, <clears throat> I love this time of year because it's um, actually kind of fair season, but it's also the time of year that I moved up here to Washington from Oklahoma. And um, it's been quite a few years now, I think about 120 <laughs> kind of feels that way sometimes, right? But I'm always, always thankful for that, and I'm always thankful for the fair. And we went, go to the fair, and I enjoy the horses and enjoy everything. And, and as I'm limping around the fair, I'm seeing all kinds of good stuff, and they got good food. And, and I'm like, do we go to the food for any other reason but to eat, <laughs> Right? It used to be like we had we have four kids and um, we'd take them to the fair, right? And so, and you have four kids, like three of them are separated. The three younger ones are separated by a year apart, and then the older ones like four years above them. So, um, <clears throat> I remember it wasn't. Oh, I think they were about nine. My son was nine, and one of my daughters was eight, and the other one was seven. And the thirteen-year-old, I don't, I don't even know where she was. She is really smart, though. It doesn't matter where she's at; she's the smartest person in the room. <laughs> and probably with her not being there that day, kind of testifies to that, right? <laughs> and so I'd gotten up early, and I went to shoot some horses, and we were going to go to the rodeo. Like they have a, a nice rodeo at the fair. If you like rodeo, that's a good thing to go to. And so. Um, <clears throat> I had to get up early and go get some work done. And so I left all those kids with Linda for the whole day with the anticipation of we're going to the fair and we're going to the rodeo, right? So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get to go to the rodeo. Everyone's going to be excited. So I get home and I walk in the door and my son, now he rode steers. And so he wanted to be a bull rider. He's going to be like the best bull rider in the world. So he's sitting on our couch and our couch was not a couch arm. Right, he was on the arm of the couch, and he's got his his bull rope and his glove on, and he's sitting there, and he's like this, and he's like going up, uh, <laughs> riding it. And then sometimes he would make eight seconds, other times he'd get bucked off. So then he'd get flung down, right? And so here he's getting flung down, and, and um, I'm like, what are you doing? We, we're gonna go. What are you guys doing? And then I look over at my daughter. The one just younger than him, her name's Taylor. She's sitting on the couch, and her and Krisha, the youngest, are sitting there, and they're playing Princess. Princess is getting married. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? We're getting ready to go. So Jamie's sitting here on the edge going like this, right, Fall, falling off every once in a while. And Taylor's over here saying, I'm going to marry this guy, and, and I'm going to have this castle. And Chris is like, well, I want to marry someone. Well, you can't. You're too young. And I'm like, she's just a year younger than you. Let her marry somebody. I was like, actually, how about none of you guys get married till you're 40? Right? And so I'm sitting there watching them, and I'm like, good Lord, where's Linda? And so I'm looking for my wife, because she's been through this the whole day, Right? And so I was like, you guys get ready. And then so 
it was kind of chilly, kind of like now. And so, so um, <clears throat> here, here she comes. She walks over, and she's got like a T-shirt on, but she's got like the sweatshirt, and it's on backwards. So I'm like, here, let me help you. We got to get going. You kids get ready, everything else. And so I grab her sweatshirt, and I help her switch it around. I put it on. I was like, honey, what's the matter with you? I thought you'd be ready. And Linda's like, well, I'm just so tired, right? I'm just so exhausted. Have you ever been with these kids like this long? It's like, okay, right? But all the stuff from that day just completely wore out. So we ended up going to the rodeo, and it was fun, and we actually got there at a decent time, right? But it, was, um, <clears throat> it just made me think, how many of us in our life, it gets so hectic, and we've got all these things hitting us and coming at us and going here and going there, that we just get to a point where we're just exhausted, and we're like, you know something? I know I got to go to this next step and I know it's going to be good and I know everything's going to work out, right? But I just so tired. I just need to sit down. I just need to do this. Some of us might be there today. And it might not be physical. It might be mental. It might be emotional. It, it might be in a battle that you're facing. But I want to assure you this morning that God's there and that you're not alone. And just like me coming to the rescue, I kind of got to be a little bit of a hero, right? Come to the rescue. Jesus is there all the time. And he says, come, all who are weary, and I will give you more work. No, and I will give you rest. And so where I find the most rest is talking to him, spending time with him, spending time in, in the Word. The, the Bible says that, that the Word is spirit and that it's life. You want to find life, you'll find it in, in the Word. And so, so I, I, try to get, I, try to get a, I try to get alone. And I try to spend time with God and I try to just recharge, right? And like, you're, well, I don't have time to do this. Or, yeah, you do. How many of you guys drive? You know how much praying I can do when I'm driving? A lot of the cars get nervous when I close my eyes. <laughs> you know, you don't have to close your eyes to pray, right? You can talk to him and just talk to him just like he's right here. And so, so I'll, I'll talk to him. Or when I'm cleaning a stall, I get more messages to preach. And I can hear God louder when I'm cleaning a stall than I can doing anything else. I don't know what it is about it. it it's the funniest thing. So there's stuff that you do every day that you can say, you know something, I'm just going to talk to you. And you know what, pretty soon I find myself going through my day, and I'm not just limited in my day to um, having just this one set prayer time, but I find myself talking to him about everything. Like I get, get in, a, um, in a competition, I need help with a horse, I'm like, oh Lord, what do I do? And you know what he does? Nothing. It's like you're on your own, bud. No, he, he helps me, right? And so like I was at doing a horse for a trainer one time, and the, in the, this, this wasn't a horse that was just started. It was a horse that they tried to start, and the saddle flipped over underneath her, and it was a wreck. She tore that saddle up. So, so I got over there, and I started to work with her, and I couldn't get the rope over on the other side of her without her just flipping out. And so... I was sitting there, I was like, man, I don't know if I can help this. And then I was like, okay, Father, what should I do? And then it come to me. I look over and I see my boots. And it's, like, it's not like a voice where God says, James, pick this up. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Too many of us are waiting for it to hear God like talking to like he did to Moses, like we see in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston or something like that. Pick this up. No, it was a soft in my... He's like, grab that boot and put it on the end of the loop. It's like, because I do my groundwork in my tennis shoes. Because I'm getting old and I don't like to walk around in boots that much, right? <laughs> and so I grab that rope and I put the boot on. And I go, okay, what do I do? And he's like, swing it over. It's like, well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so I did. I grabbed the boot and I swung it over. And she flipped out. And she flipped out. 
And there's another guy in there shoeing horses. He kind of runs out and he's watching. He's like, I thought someone's getting killed in here. What in the world's going on? And she flipped out and she flipped out. And then pretty soon she's like, oh, wait, this ain't going to kill me. And there was just a relief in her. And there was a rest. And she's like, you know something? I can trust you. And I never had a problem with that. Again, with that horse, I got the saddle on. I got, and they're like, you are so smart. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. And it wasn't even my idea. And God's not even mad that I took the credit. It's his idea, but I had to throw the boot. You know what I mean? And so, so we, we get to where we can listen to the, to, to the Father and hear the Father. And then we, then we hear... Here, like the, this parable, that's where I was talking to you about rabbinical exegesis last week and um, how there's four different levels of it, right? But there's so many different levels that God will talk to, you, to us on. And what we can't misunderstand is that the Word of God is alive. The Bible says in Hebrews, it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, right? And so it can meet you on Peshat or Remy's. Right. Or or it can go all the way down to sowed. Right. And it'll just hit you right where you need to do it because of he'll meet you where you are. There's been times in my life where I couldn't I couldn't get to where I thought I needed to be to hear from God. But he's right there with me all the time and he'll come and he'll meet you right where you are. And so as I kind of deal dive into some of these the, the levels and stuff like that, I, d- I don't want anyone to ever think, well, God can only meet me at Sod, or I don't know enough here, or I don't know enough here, because God's a big God, and he'll meet you on every level, and, and it's good. He, when he meets us, it makes us want to dive deeper and to know more about him and to know more about what he's saying, right? So in Mark chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake. While all the people were, were along the shore at, their, at the water's edge. Now what's really cool is in the, you see Jesus and he's walking around and he's getting ready to, to talk to these people. He always sits down to teach. Why is that? Because that's what the rabbis did. They would sit down. They were sitting down. And, and to me, when they sat down, it represents authority, right? I am, like the Bible says, that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. But they'd sit down to church that, to, to, to preach, but maybe it wasn't because they were just trying to do anything beyond what I'm thinking. Maybe they're just tired. They were all old, maybe. I don't, I don't know. But, but it's, it's neat to, to see that. To me, it has a lot of, a, a lot of it, it talks to me a lot. So he taught them many things by parables, and and his teaching said, now listen. Now what's a parable? Jesus is like, he's talking to him, but he's like, you guys are right here on this level, and all you want to understand is this level, and you're not even understanding this level because you're making rules upon rules upon rules, and I'm not even sure you know the same God that I am and that I represent. You hear what I'm talking about? And so, so he's like, I'm going to speak in parables. And then you can hear, but we don't hear with our ears. We hear with our mind. Now, I drew a picture of our mind, right? When I drew the little Mr. Potato Head, right? We have our mind. We have a conscious, and then we have a subconscious. But the conscious is where we think and, and where a lot of that stuff comes to first, right? And then it gets so embedded in, in us, it drops down, and that's our heart, right? And so... So we got to understand that, that God wants to work with us, not just on the thinking up here, like our brain level one. He wants to go deep and to go diving. He's, he wants to go deep diving with us. So, so let him take you places. Ask him, Father, speak to me, because I know your words are spirit mm-hmm. and, and they're life. And we're a spirit. And when he speaks to us, he's speaking to us through the spirit. Now, a lot of these things, the world knows about a lot of these things. That's a simple, simple, um, like, psychology and motivation speaking type, type stuff. 
when, when they, they understand there's a subconscious and they understand that there, there's a conscious and they understand that there's a heart and then they understand. But they think you ha the only way you can do that is by putting stuff in here. What they don't realize is we're a spirit and God will speak to our heart directly and we don't always have to bypass. Now, it's important. That's why we study the, the Bible, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more we hear about Jesus, the more that it saturates and what it's doing is it's sowing the ground for us. And then pretty soon, even if we just get it, it a head knowledge of it, which what I would call our, our conscious, pretty soon we're going to be like, wait a second, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I am, the, and it's that you may not have any of your circumstances line up with what God's telling you, but I want to tell you something. Trust God, because He'll flip those circumstances around to match what He's saying every time, right? When, when He created the heavens and the earth, what did He say, right? It said the earth was without form and, and void. And it says this it says, and the Lord God said, let there be light. But he had forgot to pay the power bill. <laughs> so he was like $1,500 before he could get the power turned on. He's like, I better go over here. No. What happened? Boom, there was. And then it says, and the Lord God said, let there be. Now, there's something cool about this, and I'll give you a little, little hint in here. When it says Lord God, it's saying... It's Yahweh. It's Jehovah. He's Jehovah Jireh. He, he's Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He's my peace. He's a... God is Elohim in the Hebrew scriptures there. So he's saying, this is my name and this is what I do. What is Elohim? He's the creator. And it says, and the Lord God said. And it's really cool. You get into like, I think it's chapter 2 or chapter 3, where Eve is talking to the serpent. And the serpent comes up, and it's the first time that they didn't mention Lord God. Do you know what he asked? <coughs> Hath God said? Do you know what he was saying? He left the Lord part. The, like, de that's what demons can't say, Lord. Right? You, you wonder, like uh, they talk about, you see people possessed and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I can tell right now if you are or not, because if they're speaking through you, because they can't say Lord, right? So here he is, he's saying, the, the uh, serpent saying, hath God said, and then she, she repeats, well, well, God, you know, and they took the personal relationship away and when they took the personal relationship away look what happened she was deceived and so that's why it's so important as we go go diving in 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 the scriptures as we look to our heart and look and build a relationship and so when we have that relationship he's just not the creator man i had uncles that didn't meet jesus until their deathbed i mean they were hard Hard, hard cowboys, you know, is drinking and running around. And, and when I mean drinking, they were good at it. They were experts. <laughs> like, you know, running around all the time, doing all kinds of stuff. And they thought that was making them a cowboy. But you talk to them and they go, yeah, there's a man upstairs. Yeah. What were they saying? They were saying the same thing that the serpent said in the Garden of Eden, but... Yeah, there is the Creator. I, I acknowledge Him, right? But I don't have a relationship with them yet. And so that's why it's so important for, for us to deal and to work with God, not out of our brain, but out of our heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? Right? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? So it's real important. So let's get to the heart of things, right?
So listen, a farmer went out to sow a seed, and, and as he was ga- scattering seeds, some fell along the path, then the birds came and ate it. Ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Others fell, Others seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said this, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now Jesus isn't saying, he's not just saying, I just want you to hear on this level. He's like, I want you to hear on the heart level. I want you to take it to heart. It goes back to Deuteronomy where, where, where he has uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 where he says, Small Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God. He is one. Love Him with all your brain, with all your emotions, with all your feelings. No, love Him with, with your heart. So it's not just an outer, it's not just a, like, like a physical hearing, but it's a spiritual, and it's hearing it in your soul and getting it down into your soul. And, and that's what he's trying to get him. He's saying, I want you to hear this. I want you to get this, but I don't want you to get it at this level where all the Pharisees and Sadducees are because they don't get it at that level because they're distorted it, and, and all they are is whitewashed sepulchers. They had a form of godliness but lacked the power thereof. And that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside us. And he says he will make alive our mortal body, right? Why? Because he works from the inside out. And religion tries to work from the outside in. And do you know what happens when you put something from the outside? You know what? You feel constricted. You get squashed. Right? There's no freedom in it. But when you get a relationship, then you'll do anything. You'll be like, you know what? I love you. I just want to be with you. And I just want to hang with you. And, and it will change your life. And it will change everyone around you. Amen? Now watch this. When he was alone, the twelve alone. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him, about the parables. They're like, what are you smoking, Jesus? Marijuana ain't even legal here. But you're like on some trip. I don't get what you're saying, right? The people who walked with him and heard him talk every day, why? Because they, they weren't thinking on his level. They were thinking on this level. They were used to reacting to everything instead of responding through faith and through love and through peace and through goodness. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? We can either react to, to our physical surroundings and our physical senses or we can respond from the fruit of the Spirit that already lives inside of you. And the Bible says that you're a house. You're a temple. What are you What are you house? The Holy Spirit. And so, if He lives inside you, guess what's going to come out of you? Right? Okay. Where am I at? Okay. And He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seen, but never perceiving. Listen. Seeing You can see, but just because you can see doesn't mean you really perceive. Right? You can be ever hearing, but never have understanding. Right? Now, I I love this this analogy, and I've probably given it here before, but it's so cool. I love it. Knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Right? Or... or, um, but understanding is not putting it in a fruit salad. Does that make sense? Okay. 
Otherwise, they, they may turn and be forgiven. So what was keeping them from being forgiven? They were seen. They saw the miracles. They saw the dead being raised. They saw people getting healed. But they didn't perceive that he was the son of God. Because they were seeing with their physical eyes. And they had such bad paradigms that this religious outside in had put chains on them that they couldn't see that the one who was there to set them free was standing right in front of them. Right? Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? What's the matter with you guys? Right? The farmer sows the word. What does he sow? The word. Remember, it says the word is spirit and it is life. Right? How do, how do you prepare for the word? By hearing the word. And you hear the word. And you study the word. And you, when you get there, Father, speak to me. But speak to me on, a, on your level, not on my level, because your thoughts aren't my thoughts. And your ways aren't my ways. But it's high. Right? And you say, Hi. Right? Above all the earth. He's saying, it's bigger than anything on this planet you'll ever face. He's a big thinker. And he wants us to get on the same level of thinking that he's on. Right? He's trying to get us to repent. You know what that means? It means we turn around. Also, that word pent means the top. So, and re means a return. So, do you know what he's saying? I want you to return to that place that I've seated you in, that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You're seated, you know, you have a position and it's at the right hand of God. I didn't say that. The Bible says that. Pretty, pretty cool, huh? You know, where's the TV cameras when we have all our weddings? We're even more royal than those dudes. Unless they know Jesus and they're as royal as we are. Okay, so some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, others... Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or perse- persecution comes because of the word, because of what? Word. Because of the word. What? Sometimes You think you're going through some stuff sometimes because you've done something wrong, and it's not. It's because God spoke something over you, and the enemy's scared to death that you're going to grab hold of it. Right? I say right a lot, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to start saying left. If I do, I don't mean I want you to leave or he left. It's just I'm trying to change things up. <laughs> left. Okay. Because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. They what? They hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Do you know what they're doing? It's like the, the rich, young, rich young ruler. It, it's not about wealth. It's about the deceitfulness of wealth, where he placed wealth at in his life. Money's neither good or bad. It's what you do with it, right? But it's deceitful. And it's an insult to God to think that money can take the place of God. Or anything else. You guys hear what I'm saying? He wants us to be blessed. That's, that's a fact, right? But that blessing does not take the place of God. You guys hear what I'm talking about? Okay. Where was I at? Okay. And the desires for other things come in and choke it. The word making it unfruitful. Others, like God, Seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, and even 100 times what was sown. And he said to them, bring, you, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? 
Instead, don't you put it on its stand? Do you know what he's saying? I'm getting ready to blow the, the lid off this thing so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? And so he says this, For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. That's pretty cool, huh? But I love this. I want you to go with me to Jeremiah chapter 31, and I'm, um, and I'm going to start in, in 31 because it says this. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. Now watch this in Hebrews chapter 10. I love this. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never be by the same, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. See, the, the high priest would go in. He'd even go into the Holy of Holies and the most holy place and he'd offer a sacrifice, but they had to keep offering it, right? Mm -hmm. Be, because it didn't take away the sins, it covered your sin. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And here, here's a real key that for, that set me free was because I grew up thinking that I always had to go to Jesus every time. You know, oh my goodness, oh my this, or I'm unsaved now, I'm going to, to hell, and if the rapture happens now, man, I'll be here to feed the dogs. Right? And I had no security at all in that. Till one day, I found out you know something? Jesus died for me and He died for my sins and He didn't just die for them so, so that I could be a beggar. He died for them once and for all so that I could stand up and be a son of the Most High God. Do you know what once and for all means? It's the slogan for the Three Musketeers. <laughs> all for one, one for all. No, that's not right. I'm just seeing if you're awake, right? Now watch this. I'm going to put a bow on this and, and be quiet so you guys can get on to, co to, your, to our communion. This is a covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. Now watch this. And write it on their hearts. Now watch this. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor, or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. So you got a new covenant here. When Jesus died and went to the cross and paid that and rose again, He says, now, what's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. And now, we don't have to, to have it put on us from the outside. We have that living inside us. It's written in our hearts. And so that's why when we mess up, we hear, hear the, the Lord. The Bible says that that God, that God convicts the sinners of sin, but He convicts the righteous of righteousness. Do you know what He's saying? I'm living in you. 
you got greater things to do. What are you doing? You're great. Pick it up. And that's how he talks to me now. And you know what I do? I'll run through a wall for him. I'm tough enough it might move. (laughs) You hear what I'm saying? Because it's about a relationship and not... And not a religion. So here in Hebrews chapter ten nineteen it says this. Therefore, why does it say it's therefore? Well, because we need to pay attention. Anytime you see it's therefore, there's a reason, right? Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, Do you hear that word hard again? In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. You know what you're conscious of is what you're going to pay attention to and that's what you're going to see fruit from. He wants us to have, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus conscience. Because he took all, all our sins away. And have our, our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, profess, for he who promised is faithful. Amen? So, Father, just let us grab a hold of you and what you have in our heart and what you're doing through us. And, and um, open our hearts and let us realize that, that they're full of you and full of answers. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.